I'm going to read a brief press statement, and then we will take questions. I am Carl Dix. I'm a co-initiator of RefuseFascism.org. Uh, other speakers will be Reverend Luis Barrios of Holy Rood Church in Manhattan, and also a professor at John Jay College, and Andy Z, who's also a co-initiator of RefuseFascism.org. And then we'll take your questions after I read the statement. Refuse fascism nationwide protest going forward on November 4th to demand this nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Despite a refusal of permits in San Francisco and threats from right-wing militia in Austin, Texas, as well as a campaign of slander and distortion by alt-right fascist websites, National organizers of Refuse Fascism stated that the demonstrations demanding the ouster of the Trump-Pence regime would go forward in over 20 cities today. The November 4th demonstrations under the slogan, This Nightmare Must End, The Trump-Pence Regime Must Go, are planned to kick off two weeks of protest and organizing to a springboard where protests continue day after day and night after night, where the thousands protesting today grow to become hundreds of thousands and eventually millions of people in the street. The scale and determination of such a movement would dramatically transform the whole political landscape such that every faction within the established power structure would be forced to respond. And all this could lead to a situation in which this fascist regime is driven from office. We intend to go forward with our demonstrations. These are mass nonviolent forms of political expression demanding that the regime go. To knuckle under would be in fact to pave the way for the fascism we are fighting. We won't do that and we call on others to back up these demonstrations including especially in the two cities under attack. At the same time, we will not be provoked into foolish or alienating actions, nor will we be cowed by the slander and vilification this regime want wallows in, or attempts to divide and intimidate people who desperately want to see this regime removed. There is too much at stake. Okay, so that's the statement that I wanted to read. Uh, Carl, um, can you talk about specifics in terms of what's been done to try to try to thwart this movement, to try to thwart today and your movement into the future? Specifics, and also, has there been any movement, any attempt in New York to stop a refuse fashion? Okay. So, what has been done to attempt? To all right, the question is from uh, WBAI is what are the specific attempts that have been done to thwart this movement? So uh, my name is Andy Z, as he said, I'm a co-initiator of Refuse Fascism and a member of the advisory board. So we have called to go forward with this demonstration because of the tremendous crimes of the Trump-Pence regime and the danger they pose to all of humanity. And in the face of this, the fascist forces that have been unleashed by the Trump regime that you saw in evidence in Charlottesville, Virginia, that you've seen running throughout different cities of the country, particularly in Berkeley where they came out uh, last month. These forces have been running a campaign of slander and hate in articles and saying that this is that we are today calling for a civil war, which is not the case. On one hand, it's absurd, but on the other hand, it's designed to intimidate. These same forces overnight have had had hit the website refusefascism.org over a million times bringing the site down and it's been an all day fight to try and keep that site up so I would commend to people who want to find out about refusefascism.org today to go to our Facebook page and also to try the website. So this is what's been going on at the same time people have tended to not take the whole thing seriously and I want to say to the media who've been reporting 
and making the main story these fascist trolls, but the main story is that there is a national organization that since last year before the inauguration has identified this as a fascist regime that's intent on establishing fascism in this country. They have not yet succeeded, but they are making progress, and the only thing that can stop that is the people themselves acting in their millions ultimately, and that's what we are calling for. So the ironic thing here, the ironic thing here is that the fascist forces grasp this better than many people who should understand and should be able to see what this has happened, but for different reasons have decided to stand aside from this. But this is a time when every person of conscience, every person who cares for justice must be out in the streets from now going forward to demand that this illegitimate regime be removed from office. And can you talk about... Well, just, uh, questions from power? anybody else first? Go ahead. Okay, look, we are talking about fascism here. It's fascism with an American flavor, but it is fascism. When you look at the way in which white supremacist forces are being called forward, where Trump looked at the thugs who descended on Charlottesville with Nazi banners and Confederate flags, and found many fine people among them. Look, I was in Charlottesville. I had many of these, of Trump's so-called fine people come up to me and say, we are starting the ovens for you. But they didn't just come to black people in Charlottesville. They came to everybody who looked Jewish, who looked as if they might be LGBTQ, and they especially targeted women who had the temerity to challenge them politically. This is fascism. When we look at the fact that one of the first things Trump did upon going into office is he created a commission to investigate and publicize immigrant violence. He did that because he's got a reality problem, which is that immigrants commit less crime than other people in this country. But he wanted to turn that on its head to justify the attacks on immigrants. And I don't know that they studied this, but one of the first things Hitler did when he got into power was to create a commission to investigate and expose Jewish crime in order to justify attacks on Jewish people. So you have a regime that is unleashing the power of the state to come down on people while at the same time unleashing right-wing white supremacist mobs to attack people, building them up, giving them succor, targeting rights to stand up, rights to defense, targeting the media. This is a fascist regime, and people who question that need to say, when did Hitler become Hitler? Was he Hitler in 34 when he was commit creating a commission to investigate Jewish crime, or was, was it not until he started to round people up in the camps? You don't wait until we get to that point. You act now to stop a fascist regime. And I think Reverend Barrios wants to make a statement. Yes. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Some people have been asking me why as a priest I'm here. So I've been telling people why not? Where is that I'm supposed to be? I was ordained as a priest to fight injustice, to fight oppression, to fight marginalization, and more important, to create a new world order, a new society order, here and now, not there and then. Going back to what Andy and Carl was saying about this Trump Pence regime. Fascism is in some way described by a fake nationalism that creates a dictatorial policy and then go into the criminalization of very specific group. Anyone who is against the system. 
That is exactly what Hitler did. And let me remind you something, because we have some legalistic people that can go into this idea that whatever this regime, Trump, Pence are doing is legal. Everything Hitler did was legal. Similar here, slavery was legal. So that means that I can't do nothing because some people in power managed to have the law in a way that they've been dealing with the social construction of crime, criminalizing immigrants in this country, criminalizing gay, lesbian, trans brothers and sisters, criminalizing the Muslim religion, criminalizing women, criminalizing everything that can go against the regime. And you're expecting me to sit down, waiting and taking everything that is happening? No, I'm not gonna sit down. I'm here to fight back. Because I believe that when you empower people, you wake up people, then we can mobilize people. And this is the beginning of this movement. We are gonna do the regime change. And let me finish with this. Because also another way that to do oppression in this country, and that's why I need to be here. But most of the time, it's always using God the wrong way. This is the so-called manifest destiny. It's so-called in God we trust. They can go against everybody, and then they're going to tell me, oh, this is God, how God wants things to happen. This is not how God wants things to happen. We better learn how to respect. We better know how to live together, appreciate diversity, and mobilize against oppression, exclusion, and marginalization. God bless. Yes, yo puedo decir algo en español. El nombre mío es el Padre Luis Barrio. Me han preguntado por qué estoy aquí y yo contesto, ¿y dónde se supone que yo esté? Yo fui ordenado como sacerdote con el propósito de luchar contra la opresión, la exclusión, la marginalización. Lo que hemos dicho aquí, desde un comienzo con Andy y con Carl, esto es un gobierno fascista que se distingue por crear un nacionalismo falso, establecer toda una dictadura y criminalizar a todo lo que se mueva en contra de este régimen. Sean personas negras, sean inmigrantes, sean hermanos o hermanas de las comunidades LGBTQ, sea cualquiera que se pronuncie en contra del gobierno. Y nosotros estamos aquí diciendo, este es el lugar para estar, Estamos comenzando un movimiento y lo vamos a lograr. A lograr. Estamos creando conciencia en el pueblo con el propósito de organizar el pueblo y movilizar al pueblo hacia el triunfo. Dios le bendiga. Okay, so yes, in my immigrant community, let me first make a correction. If you are not a Native American, you are an immigrant. The only difference is that some people got here first, and then some people got here late. Okay? And the only people who can complain against this is only black people that they were forced to come here. Everybody else, we came because we wanted to. Yes, the criminalization. This is what I teach at John Jay College. This is the social construction of crime. They always need a scapegoat. And they are targeting immigrants. Like for example, the issue that we don't have jobs because immigrants are coming here to take the jobs. Let me tell you something right now. The number one reason why we don't have jobs in one of the richest countries in the world, the US, is because this is a capitalist society. In a capitalist society, you need to create unemployment so you can decrease salary and you get the rest of the employees fighting each other instead of fighting 
the corporation. So, the other issue that I've been saying, in order to understand, let's say for example, Latin American people coming inside the U.S., you can't just go with this naive, ignorant analysis that we one day wake up in one of our country and I don't have nothing else to do, and then I make a decision to come here. This is a very well orchestrated plan by USA foreign policy and rich people in our country to force poor people and working class people to get out of the country and to come into this country. Rich people in our country do not come here. And when they come, it's only to do tourism. They want to go back. Poor people, working class people, we are all victims of USA foreign policy and those rich people in our countries. Okay, so, okay, uh, just for the people who are, um, who have been gathering for the protest, what you've walked in on is a press conference. The rally's going to start in about 25 minutes or so, and there'll be a rally for until about 3.30 and then a march through the city. Uh, all these, this march will be nonviolent. Everything about it today will be nonviolent, and it is permitted here in New York. Even as there are permit battles and denial of permits in San Francisco, these demonstrations are taking place in 20 cities across the country, cities and towns. And for the media who's doing this press conference, I want to just emphasize once again that what you are seeing today is the beginning, is the beginning of a movement that's demanding that the Trump-Pence regime must go, that the nightmare that people feel in their hearts that this regime represents has to end, and that the only way to end that is by creating a political situation in this country where there are thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and eventually millions of people in the streets every day demanding that the regime be ousted. And then all the kinds of infighting and scandals that you see in Washington will be brought to, or could be brought to, fruition and this entire regime be removed from office. That's our purpose today. It's nothing less. There's many other protests that go on around the effects of this Trump-Pence regime. There is one organization that is mobilizing the masses of people to say the whole regime must go in the only way that it can be done, which again is the people themselves are the answer to that. So are there any more questions? If not, we will end the press conference. Yeah, over here. Yeah, that was actually the first question. We already spoke to it, um, but in brief, his question is, uh, do we have any statement about all the false media that's coming from the fascist websites, especially uh, got amplified through the, uh, the, the website Info, Infowars of Alex Jones, a site that Donald Trump follows and has appeared on and who has, he has supported in the past. These are all attempts to scare people away from this rally and to become part of how there's this one feature of fascism, let me say this, one feature of fascism is that at its essence it strips away democratic rights and civil rights and rules through a, more, through a form of more open, open terror. At the same time, it always in every country relies on extra legal forces to enforce that and to intimidate especially marginalized communities. And that's what you've seen with this. And what is unfortunate in this situation is that these fascist forces have understood the potential of a movement of people in this country against this regime better than many of the people who should be out in the streets and should be mobilizing their constituencies to come out and, and protest and join in from their own perspective in a movement that can get rid of this. Because everything that people are fighting for, whether it be immigrant rights, LBGTQ rights, black rights, Latinos, Native Americans, all of these things are in jeopardy. It is time for us all to unite and say this regime must go and then we can take the struggle forward from there. We do this in over 20 cities across this country. We do this in the name of humanity. We do this on behalf of women, on behalf of LGBTQ people, on behalf of black people as white supremacy is being given new sanction in the White House. We do this to stand with our Muslim sisters and brothers in this country, being demonized, being targeted, being the victims of hate crime, and Muslims all over the world who are being threatened by this Trump-Pence fascist regime. We do this standing with the people whose lives are being threatened by Donald Trump in the Korean Peninsula. We do this with the people of the world, and we are going to get into all of this.
We are going to get into all of this today. We are going to rally against this today. We are going to get organized today. And we are taking the struggle to drive out the Trump-Pence regime to a whole new level today. You're going to hear about all of this. We just heard, not only are you going to hear about all of this, you are going to be part of all of this. Am I right? Yeah. Are y'all ready to be part of this? Yeah. Now it's early. We're still getting gathered up. We're going to take some time. We're going to practice some chants. We're going to welcome people as they gather. My name is Sansara Taylor. I'm going to be one of your MCs today. I want to introduce Janelle Mims. What's up, everybody? How you doing out there? I said, what's up, everybody? How are you doing out there? Don't make me take this mic off. Okay, yeah, he's already telling me not to touch the mic. It's too hot. Now look, we're at a time right now where the world is either on fire or underwater. Make some noise for all the people who are out, the millions of people who are struggling right now, who we are in solidarity and standing up for. Make some noise right now for being out in the streets. With the eyes of the world on us in Times Square, make some fucking noise. You are in the right place and you are on the right side of history. And our mission today, this is not just one day. Nah, y'all, this is not just one day. This is the beginning of a process. A process that will end when Trump and Pence are driven from the White House and this fascist regime is driven out. So we're here to begin today. And like Sansara said, we're gonna do that together. We're gonna do that with warmth and humanity for everybody that comes through, all right? And we're gonna do that coming from various perspectives, absolutely. But we're all here to stand for one thing. And this is where we're gonna get a little bit of chant introduction right here, all right? We're here for one thing. Let's repeat after me, no, no. No, no, no. In the name of humanity. I know it's early. In the name of humanity. We refuse a fascist America. No. No. No, 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 in the name of humanity, we refuse a fascist America. No, 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 in the name of humanity, we a fascist America. No, 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 no. All right. That's Jamal. My name, like I said, is Sansara Taylor. And we are here on behalf of RefuseFascism.org. RefuseFascism.org is a movement made up of people coming from diverse perspectives, very different viewpoints and backgrounds, who are coming together out of our common recognition that the Trump-Pence regime poses a catastrophic danger to humanity and that it is our responsibility to stand together, to move heaven and earth, to move ourselves into the streets, and to not stop until this regime has been driven from power. We're here because we recognize that nobody's going to do it for us. No one's going to do this for us. It is going to take us, the masses of people in this city, across this country, and everybody is welcome. Everybody is invited into this movement from different, whatever land you were born on, whatever language you speak, whatever God you worship, or if you're like me and you don't worship any God, you are welcome in this movement if you want to stand up and say no to a fascist America. No to a fascist America. So we're going to get our rally started in a few minutes. We just wanted to welcome you and let you know what's going on. We're going to have a number of very important messages that we bring to you. But before we uh, step off the stage for just a couple minutes, let me know. Are y'all feeling ready to stand up today? Yeah. Do you guys have the people and the hearts of people all over the world today in your hearts? Are you standing for them? Yeah. Are you here?
because you don't want to see women degraded and enslaved and denied their right to abortion and birth control and forced to have children against their will. Is that why you are here? Yeah. Are you here because you were sick at heart when you saw those white supremacists with torches in Charlottesville marching and chanting with Nazi slogans and when they took the life of Heather Heyer, are you here to take her place today? Yeah. Are you here to stand up and say no to a nuclear, a nuclear war, a nuclear holocaust with a demented bully Donald Trump threatening the whole world? Are you here to say no to that? Yeah. All right, so then you are in the right place. And I want to welcome you. I want to let you know we came out in the face of a lot of lies. Did any of you guys hear the lies about what we're doing today? Y'all yeah. hear these lies that are being whipped up by these fascist trolls and white supremacists? They're doing this because they recognize that there really are millions and millions in this country who hate what this regime is doing. They know that are millions and millions of people detest and are disgusted by Donald Trump and Mike Pence and Jeff Sessions and the rest of them. And so they want to intimidate people because they know if we got together, and if we did it for more than just one day, if we kept coming back, and if we keep coming back, they know that we have the power. We're the ones who have the power to drive them out. And that is why they are threatening us. That is why they are lying about us. But that is also why we refuse to be intimidated. We refuse to be intimidated. We refuse to back down because this is not just about us. This is about the future of humanity. And we have right on our side. We have the truth on our side. And because that is the fact, we are going to be marching today and we're going to be marching with people all over the country. And we're going to come back tomorrow. And we're going to come back the next day. And refusefascism.org has a plan where this movement is going to grow day after day, night after night. Next Saturday, we'll tell you more about this in a little bit, but next Saturday we're coming back after Trump has been all over East Asia rattling the nuclear saber. We're going to be saying no to a new nuclear war. Next Saturday we're going to rally even bigger. Two Saturdays from now we're going to come back two times, three times as strong. You guys are going to be part of the ones gathering your friends and your community to make sure that this movement is not a one-time moment. This is not about venting our frustration and feeling good that we did something. We should feel good for doing something, but we have to fight it all the way through. So in two weeks, we're going to be back even stronger all over the country. And this movement is going to continue to grow. All the media, you get this down. RefuseFascism.org in the name of humanity. Put your fist up, everybody, and repeat after me. In the name of humanity. In the name of humanity. In the name of humanity. We refuse to accept. We refuse to accept. We refuse to accept. A fascist America. No. Before my name is Sansara Taylor, this is Jamal Mims. We're going to be your MCs today all day. And we're going to march with you. We're going to end down at Washington Square Park. And I just want to give a shout out as we get started to the people who are gathered all over the country. Did y'all know that people are rallying today in Miami, in Cleveland, in Indianapolis? They're gathering in Minnesota. They're gathering in St. Louis. They're gathering in Cincinnati in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and Boston. They're gathering in Chicago. We're rising here in New York City. We are rising up in Philly, in Austin, in Seattle, in Tucson, Arizona. How y'all feel about that? <laughs> Akron, Ohio, Los Angeles. And now I know you wish you could be with this next rally because they're rallying in Honolulu, okay? They're out in Portland, they're in the streets of Salem, they're in San Francisco, we are gathering in Atlanta, we are rising up all across this country. And so everybody, you're not just, look around, 
We're hundreds here now, we're going to grow throughout the day, but we're more than the people here. We're all over this country, we're all saying no. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. And we're making a pledge today to the people of the world, to women, to LGBTQ people, to immigrants everywhere living in terror, to Muslims, to, to the environment and the planet, to the people who have been terrorized and brutalized by the police and by white supremacist thugs. We are, we are making a pledge to all of these people today that we are gathering and we are going to launch a movement to new heights. A lot of people say, okay, a protest. You do it for a, one day, what does it amount to? Well, every protest matters, but I, I want to make clear that we know from the step off, this is not just one day. This is a movement of sustained and growing mass, nonviolent political protest that will not stop until this regime is driven out. So I want to bring up our first speaker, who is a beautiful human being I've gotten to know in this struggle. He is somebody who is on the steering committee of the New York chapter of RefuseFascism.org. He's somebody who was one of the initiators of Gays Against Guns. And he is somebody who is coming to speak on behalf of one of our endorsers today, Rise and Resist. Please give some love to J.W. Walker. All right, New York! <laughs> 10 months ago, was it 11 months ago? How long ago was it that we woke up after going to sleep praying that whatever we prayed to, that this wasn't going to be the reality that we were going to be forced to live in? And in those days after that, I was proud to join with my friends from Gays Against Guns and other activists around New York City to join and create Rise and Resist. And then I was at an action one day in Washington Square Park where we're marching to later today. And a woman handed me a, a sheet of paper about a new group that was being formed called Refuse Fascism and they were meeting at the Cooper Union in a couple of days and would I come? And so I said, okay, I'll go and I'll check it out. And what I heard there on that first day, on that first meeting at Cooper Union, was something that has sustained me every month, every day, since this administration went into office. And that is the true and firm belief that the American people, more than anyone else, have the power to drive them out. And that is why we are here today and in 20 cities across this country starting a mass movement that will continue day in and day out until we have millions of people doing different things every day in the streets across this nation, going from 20 cities to 50 cities to 100 cities to 1,000 cities from coast to coast, from Canada to Mexico, out in the streets every day demanding that this Trump-Pence regime must go. So I want to ask every single person who's here today, I am so proud of you. I am so thrilled to be here among you. I see friends and, co and activists and colleagues out in this crowd, and I'm so glad to see you all here. We have some work to do. We, when we finish up today, when we go back home to our loved ones and to our homes and to our pets, we have to be resolved. We have to be resolved that we are going to speak to everyone in our lives. We are going to speak to the people in our places of work, at our places of worship, at our places of relaxation and community, and to get everyone to sign on to this pledge, to commit that we will work tirelessly, ceaselessly, to ensure that this nightmare ends, 
that this Trump-Pence machine must go. So I want you all, when you leave here today, I want you to call your mom, call your pa, call your kids, call your cousins, call your aunties and uncles, call your friends from high school, call your friends from college. I want you to reach out on social media. I want you to reach out at your laundromat. I want you to reach out in your bodega. I want you to reach out to everyone that you come into contact in your life every day and tell them that together we can drive them out. I want to hear y'all say it with me. Drive them out. 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 All right, thank you. New York. Yo, let's give it up for Jay Walker. Drive them out. Drive them out. All right. How many folks were out in the streets the day after Trump got elected? Make some noise if you were out in the streets on the day that Trump took office. Folks here in the streets of New York City and Washington, Washington D.C. and all over the world, make some noise if you were part of the millions of people that took the streets on the day after Trump took office, part of the Women's March across the country. Make some noise if you were a part of that. Now look, we're here to join with people of all walks of life. And in particular, this regime has had its target on the backs of women. And we have a statement coming from a fierce fighter in the struggle. A fierce fighter in the struggle to recognize the equal rights of women. Make some noise if you know that women are women. Hold up half the sky and are actually Incredible! Make some noise! We have a statement coming from Eve Ensler, a playwright. All right, world-renowned playwright, known for the vagina monologues, world-renowned for her stance and her struggle and her leadership in the fight for women's liberation. Let's give it up for this statement from Eve Ensler, read by Lucia from Refuse Fascism. A message to November 4th protesters from Eve Ensler. I stand in solidarity with everyone here who refuses fascism, racism, misogyny, white supremacy, and hate. I stand against the predator in chief and his cabal who are trying every day to kill life in all its forms control and destroy the bodies of women, eviscerate and poison our Mother Earth, spread hate and division through their support of Nazis and white supremacists, terrorize our immigrants and non-documented workers. We must rise today and every day until this vile orange contagion has been removed and as we we must ignite our collective imagination in order to build a new world and a new time of caring, nurturing, equality, and love. This nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful message from Eve Ensler. That's right. Listen up. I want to let you know. How many of you guys remember when Donald Trump was campaigning and he said, oh, we're going to make Muslims register? Do you guys remember that? And it smacked of the whole legacy of Nazi Germany and putting that yellow star on Jews. Am I right? This is a very sinister, a very fascist element of the Trump-Pence regime, the demonization of Muslims. And it didn't stop with campaign rhetoric. People who say, oh, it's just talk. It's not just talk because one of the very first things that Donald Trump did when he got in office is he signed that Muslim travel ban that struck terror into the hearts of Muslim people and immigrants all over the world. This is a nightmare for humanity. 
and the courts blocked him, but he came back and he pushed it again. And the courts blocked him, and he came back and he pushed it again. And the court said, you can't do that. And he said that these courts are out of line. And he had his spokespeople come out and threaten the courts. There has been a huge upsurge in violence and terror and vandalism against mosques and Muslim people all over this country. And this is our responsibility. It is not okay. Last weekend, down in Tennessee, a lot of white supremacists rallied. And there was reports in the newspapers about the immigrant communities, the Muslim communities, and the mosque that was terrorized, and people who were afraid to come to their house of worship because the white supremacists were marching and they knew they had sanction and support from the people in power. This is how fascism comes to America. And it's very important that everybody take the stand whether you're Christian, whether you're atheist, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're Jewish, that when Muslims are under attack, we are all Muslims. Am I right? I want you guys to make a lot of noise because we are bringing up a leader in the Muslim community here in New York who has been a courageous voice standing up against this terror and standing with members of his community who had family members terrorized and even murdered by police. I want you guys to make a lot of noise and give it all the love in your heart. Let's bring up Imam Konate Suleiman. Y'all can make more noise than that. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I'm here today because I'm human. I'm here today because I'm an Imam. And I'm Rabbi, Pastor, Reverend, Bishop. Call me whatever name you want. Because we are one Ummah, one nation under one God. God has respected human beings. No one. We're not afraid of anyone. We are good people. We're not criminals. We came to America for better life. We came here for American dreams. Why us? So I'm here today to share this with you. We're not afraid. We know that God is protecting us. No one can terrorize us. This regime must go and be living soon. And I'm positive and I'm quiet about it. So let me share this with you now. When I first come to the United States, even the regular people, when they do something, they say, God bless America. But a few years ago, we forgot all about God and we become godless people. That's why God is punishing us. That's why this guy is in Washington DC, which is true. Let us respect ourselves to Allah, to God, and we will make it. Christian, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, we are human. Let us come together and say no, no to this regime, no to these people. We are not criminals. We are here to represent God on the earth. We're not going anywhere. Deportation, no deportation. Orders or no orders. We're not criminals. We're not leaving. America is our home, our sweet home. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Imam Konate. Here we go. We are here, as he said, we are human beings. Muslims are full human beings, am I right? Yes. Black people are full human beings, am I right? Yes. Who would have thought in 2017 we have to say these words? But just a few days ago, John Kelly, the man who a lot of people deluded themselves into thinking was going to bring reason to the White House 
He came out and told the world that Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general who led people to fight and kill to defend chattel slavery, a white supremacist genocidal institution, John Kelly called him an honorable man. This is a shame that's being brought on this country and on the world if we do not stand up and say no. Black people are full human beings. Muslims are full human beings. Women are full human beings. LGBTQ people are full human beings. Immigrants are full human beings. And people around the world, people born in other countries who speak different languages, who have different cultures, their lives are as valuable as our lives, am I right? Donald Trump campaigned on an ugly slogan, and you hear it all over the place, America first. And his supporters get out there and they chant, USA. Like this is the only place that has people whose lives matter. I want you guys to say this with me. We're going to do a chant. It's very simple. It is two words, and it is the complete opposite to the morality of Donald Trump. It is humanity first. 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 All right, y'all. We're going to do that as we march in a little while. But first, I want to bring somebody else up. We got a lot of messages coming in. A lot of messages of support. And I want you to hear from how many of y'all know Gloria Steinem? Gloria Steinem has been on the forefront of fighting against the enslavement of women. And frankly, the more she's continued in her struggle, the more she's taken on board the struggle against war, against racism, against oppression of LGBTQ people. Gloria Steinem has been a voice of conscience for years. She is one of the original endorsers of this movement. And she sent a statement to us right when we started back in December, right after Donald Trump seized the electoral victory. Actually, he lost the election, but he seized the victory anyhow. And Gloria Steinem sent us a message then, and we want to give you, she sent her regards to these rallies today. She could not be here, but we're also going to share the statement she gave us when we launched this movement. Welcome, Linda, to read the statement from Gloria Steinem. Woo! Hi there. Wow, this is so exciting. When I was a little girl, I wanted to grow up and be just like Gloria Steinem. So this is quite an honor. All right, this is from Gloria. Our Constitution does not begin, I the President, it begins, we the people. The single positive result of the so-called election of Donald Trump, an unqualified, unstable, and authoritarian man who does not deserve to be invited into the White House, much less its occupant, is that we know now the responsibility lies with us. I am heartened by all the street demonstrations that I have that have been a constant in every city since the election, by the planned marches in Washington during the time of the inauguration, and by the major demonstrations in every state capital on this day of the Electoral College. Now, we know it's up to we the people and we will not allow one authoritarian to dictate to us. Thank you for being here tonight in support of that future to which we aspire, democracy. Thanks. What's up? Can we make some noise for the statement from Gloria Steinem? How folks feeling right now? If you're tepid, let me hear you go, hmm. If you're outraged, let me hear you go, ah! 
All right, we have a quick logistical announcement right quick. There's a gap in the middle, y'all. Again, we're here to be together. And folks out here, police in particular, are starting to push people into the second pin. But we got plenty of room actually in the back of the first pin. So people, come on in, come on up to the front so that we can get more room in those first pins so they don't have to push us into the second one. All right? Second thing, coming up right quick. Got a special treat for y'all coming up. All right? Our next speaker. How many folks, let me, can you make some noise if you're a fan of hip hop? Alright? So I've always wanted to say that to like a crowd of people. <laughs> hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Alright? Next up, we have rapper and activist. Alright? This is the person I look up to immensely for the stand that they have taken in terms of their art and their music. Alright? A lyrical nightmare and someone who's actually used his platform specifically to talk about global and social political issues. An endorser, one of the people who has actually begun this movement of refused fascism, let's give it up for Immortal Technique. Thank you very much. I think it's important to have some context about how we got here. A long time ago when we were told that we would have a liberal president under Obama, we continued under imperialistic policies. And now we're surprised when we planted the seeds of despotism at our own door. There's still no health care. There's still no human rights. People are still blind to the fact that we've begun wars that have no end in sight. We've ignored the issues at home, and the issues abroad have gotten worse, and the issues at home haven't gotten any better. In terms of unity, we're at an all-time low because people can't even decide what the violation of human rights are because people can't even tell you who's a human being or not. They'll tell you some people are aliens. We're not aliens. We're not from space. We're other human beings that were involved in a war with the United States of America who took their territory. We're indigenous people. And at the end of the day, we have to admit certain things to ourselves that Columbus never discovered America. Indigenous people discovered Columbus lost its seat. That this country was built by a multitude of people, but when we say this country was built by immigrants, or, or immigrants are everywhere, yes, there are immigrants that came to this country, but there were also people that were forcibly taken to this country, and there were people whose land this already was a long time ago. And I really, really do appreciate the fact that we're finally having a conversation about the truth, and that people were enslaved, they were not slaves. There's no person who's born a slave. We're all born free human beings. They went through a process of dehumanization, dehumanization and slavery. And now we're finally discussing that history and I appreciate that we have an honest conversation amongst ourselves. We need healthcare because even the people that are angry and disagree with us, they need treatment too. Uh, they, they were asked me to share a small poem, so I will and I'll leave. But before I go, I just want to say peace and respect to everybody who came out tonight. Even if you have slight disagreements or whatever. Imagine the word of God without religious groupies. Imagine a savior born in a Mexican hoopty, persecuted single mother in a modern manger. You crucify him again like a fucking stranger. Tears and anger are worth more than diamonds or rubies. Imagine being locked up since juvie. Imagine changing your life and still going out like Tukey. Imagine people talking shit when they never knew me. Imagine a movie that depicted the pain in your life like them kids in Afghanistan chasing a kite. For most of the world, that's what it's like. Imagine if the person you're supposed to love for the rest of your life is set to marry someone else at the end of the night. They say you fight the greatest jihad in your heart and your mind and fight the hardest when you start from behind. So I dream the impossible all the time. Fuck a Masonic design, America's future is mine. Repeat that to yourself. Cause if our culture's a crime, then numbers tatted on your arm aren't too far behind. They can only conquer you after they murder your mind. So rise up, motherfucker, like the sign of the times. I feel my body weakening, but my spirit is fine, ready to 
go to war with devils at the drop of a dime and fight with my rebel army until the stars are aligned. Because Nostradamus was a white man's prophet who predicated European supremacist logic because the pilgrims and the conquistador columns killed more innocent people than Hitler and Stalin. So I guess the fortune teller skipped an antichrist or two. Brother, give this to the OGs doing life with you and pray for the problems with the Pope's psychology so the Vatican will offer an apology. For destroying the people's liberation theology, snatching the spirit of Jesus from people in poverty, business decisions like keeping people in prison, but had the opposite effect incarcerating religion. That type of crooked politics exposed on a populace is obvious if you read the Northwood documents. So fuck the compliments for what I recorded, and please live for revolution instead of always dying for it. I love y'all. Thank you very much. Get home safe. Get home safe. And keep educating your children. About how this started. I love y'all. God bless you. And to the people that are angry, I hope you wake up because it's not going your way. And he doesn't care about you. You're just another cog in the wheel. You're nothing to him. You're another number he's gonna scam like he's done a million times. You're not from New York. I'm from New York City. I'm from Harlem. We know a fraud when we see a fraud. Ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for a mortal technique. Look, the songs that we share together, the chants that we share together. Let's try this one one more time. I think y'all know it. No Trump, no KKK, no. All right, no Trump, no KKK, no. I said no Trump, no KKK, no. I said no Trump, no KKK, no. All right. So look, the chants that we bring together, the songs that we bring together, these things actually bind us for more than just this moment and more than just today. The music that we make together and the culture that we make together, that we make together sustains this movement. This is a more than one day thing, y'all. Like Sansara said, we're coming back out next Saturday. We're coming back out the Saturday after that. And RefuseFascism.org has plans for every day in between. But I got a question for y'all. Are y'all coming back? Will you be here? I got another question. Y'all got friends? I said, do you have friends? Will they be here? Will you bring them here? Will you bring them here the next week? Because this movement grows from thousands to millions starting today. Now we're going to hear from another musician, a Grammy Award winning composer, right? of the Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra. I've seen this guy take the inside of a piano and make it sound like it was singing inside. Can we give it up for... Okay. Also, it's gonna be read by another artist. This is like a, a, a section of art right now. We got the front man, the song and dance man of the revolution, Miles Soleil from Outer National who's going to be up to read a statement from Grammy Award-winning composer Arturo O'Farrell of the Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra. Let's make some noise. Good afternoon. You are in the place to be today. November 4th, it begins. This is not a one-day thing. We're going to stay in the streets until our demand is met. The Trump-Pence regime must go. I'm from the band Outer National, and it's my honor to read a statement that was sent from halfway around the world by the Grammy Award-winning, incredible, world-renowned leader of the New York Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra, Arturo O'Farrell. This is Arturo. In all of my years traveling as a musician, I have never seen the standing of the United States as low as it is now. Every human being I speak to throughout the planet is horrified by the current administration. We have become the laughing stock of the planet. We are feared and reviled. The president's lack of control, his violent temper, his thin and vain skin, together with his appalling lack of intellect, knowledge of history, and general misunderstanding of the world has forced the planet to reckon with a new mediocrity. It is a dangerous and deeply embarrassing moment in American history. 
Arturo Faro continues, the Trump Pence regime represents the apex of American racism, sexism, violence, division, and fear-mongering. It is also the most repressive and fascist-like governance we've ever seen. Designed to keep the wealthy in their boardrooms genuflecting to their gods of money and greed, this regime perpetuates the lie of economic growth through financial genocide of the middle class and poor, all perpetuated by lies and misinformation. At a time of global crisis, these clowns respond with the America First rhetoric that will in fact bring tremendous pain to our shores. The Trump and Pence regime must be brought down immediately. A statement from the advisory board committee member of Refuse Fascism, Latin Grammy Award winner, renowned musician Arturo O'Farrell. and give some love to Miles Soleil of Alma National, Future the Rock. Okay, y'all, so we hit, I emphasized this at the beginning, but I want to tell you again, in case you forgot, because you've been hearing a lot of beautiful words and a lot of big ideas, but also in case you came a little late, we are refusefascism.org. We are a movement for everybody, whatever political perspective you are coming from. However old or young you are, wherever you are born on this planet, whatever language you speak, whatever God you worship or if you do not worship, whatever, however you love or choose to identify, this is a movement for you if you refuse to accept a fascist America. So if that is you, make some noise. We are marching today in two dozen cities. We were lied about. We've been threatened down in Austin, Texas. There are armed militias who have sworn they will come out and stalk our sisters and brothers who are taking to the streets. We are standing with them today, am I right? We are saying we've got your back to the people in Austin, am I right? And more than that, we are saying we've got your back to the people of the world who were terrorized and terrified by the Trump-Pence regime and his finger on a nuclear button, am I right? So I want you to listen up, our next speaker is bringing a message that's being delivered at every single rally in Cincinnati, in Los Angeles, in Austin, Texas, in Chicago, in Minneapolis, in Salem, Massachusetts, all over the country. We're delivering this same speech to let people know about this movement, to let people know how we plan to go forward, not just for one day, but a movement that grows. So we're gonna have somebody come up who's been at the core of this movement, whose political insight and leadership and example has been instrumental in forging and founding Refuse Fascism and navigating all the challenges that we've encountered so far and all those yet to be encountered. He is the spokesperson for Revolution Books up in Harlem. He's a dear friend of mine, and he's on the advisory board of Refuse Fascism. Please give some love and tune in for Andy Z. All right, how you doing? Are you ready to begin? Yes. Today it can and it must be said that there are people in this country who refuse to be silent, who have stood up with courage and conviction and braved the lies and the threats of violence and death by fascist trolls. Today, we and people just like us in cities and towns across the country have overcome fear and uncertainty, recognizing the grave danger that the Trump-Pence regime presents to humanity. And we are standing together to say, this nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. And in the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. And we are rallying today to begin a new phase of the struggle. 
to bring about what millions of people ache to see, an end to a regime that imperils the lives of millions of people, a regime that denies basic rights, denies people's humanity and even their basic health, and yet its danger is far greater than all of that. Without exaggeration, the future of humanity and the planet hangs in the balance from what the Trump-Pence regime is doing. This is a regime that is playing roulette with nuclear weapons and that is denying science and climate change while discarding environmental regulation. Millions know and millions feel this horror. Who will end this nightmare? We will. So, give me a second. But now it's your turn to answer the question. Who will end this nightmare? It's only the determined struggle of millions of people acting together with courage and conviction that can drive this regime from power. And today, we are beginning a process of continuing protests that are going to demand this whole illegitimate regime be ousted from power. We are going to reach out to all sections of the people, spreading this everywhere, growing week by week and month by month. Listen to me. Week by week and month by month, we are not going to give up on this. We are going to build a movement that increases in size and determination. And we will not be deterred by naysayers, by cynics, by those who normalize, accommodate, or conciliate with a regime such as this. We are right to do this. The time is now. The hour is late. Our actions today across the country reflect the values and respect for humanity and the world that we want. And it's all in stark contrast to the hatred and the bigotry of the Trump-Pence regime and those who would defend it or stand to the side. And we have what we need to begin. Number one, we have an understanding of what it is we are fighting. This is not a normal presidency. This is a regime working every day to bring about an American fascism, manifest destiny, and American exceptionalism. A fascism wrapped in the Bible, taken literally in the American flag, saturated with racism, misogyny, and xenophobia. Number two, we have a plan to bring forward the hundreds and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands and eventually the millions of people to create a situation where this regime is forced from power. And number three, we have a plan for the next two weeks that will be a springboard so that we can work to change the calculus from what may seem impossible today to become a movement that shakes the political ground. For 11 months, there has been one outrage after another from the Trump-Pence regime. Outrages that assault the conscience and threaten the world and in its very extremeness fills people with anguish and anger and that is the basis for millions to act on our demand. Can anyone seriously deny that the Trump-Pence regime is working to radically eviscerate the rule of law, bludgeon the truth, demonize and terrorize immigrants, disabled people, refugees, Muslims, deny that this is a regime that stigmatizes LGBTQ people, that tramples Native American people's rights, that threatens black and Latino youth with more police brutality and mass incarceration, that threatens the environment and even war, including with nukes, that this is a regime that despises women, from the sexual predator in chief to a vice president and much of a cabinet who would return women to the Middle Ages without rights to control their own destiny. We act now because fascism gets normalized as it gathers momentum. Fascism gets normalized as it gathers momentum. While group after group gets demonized, others get by. They go about their daily lives, and the unthinkable becomes routine, and the abnormal becomes normal. And then, it might take only a single incident 
intentional or not, for the hammer to drop. My friends, history has shown that fascism must be stopped before it becomes too late. And for those of you or those out there who have thought that letting Trump's generals run the show would bring adult supervision into the room, now you see that you have a president and a chief of staff who denies the horror of slavery and the necessity of a civil war to end it. And today, November 4th, as Donald Trump stomps into Asia, seven billion people hold their breath for fear of what he might unleash or put in place while he's there. All of this should make clear, painfully clear, that we cannot wait. We cannot stand by. We must fight from where we are now. We must unite and struggle together to drive out this momentous regime. The hour is late, but the time is now. Now let's get down on the ground. Some people are going to tell you that we cannot do this. But they are wrong. This is possible. Last year, the South Korean people, starting right about now, took to the streets in demonstrations that took place at first every week. And then they mushroomed over a few months to politically engulf the whole country. It forced the removal of their president. They created a crisis of legitimacy and on that basis all kinds of previously hidden truths became revealed and the people began to pour out. Cracks that had existed in the superstructure in society turned into deeper and deeper fissures and more and more struggle erupted and the legitimacy of the regime began to unravel and faced with that situation the powers that be in South Korea found the mechanism somehow to remove their duly elected president and call new elections by March. So understand, that was a smaller country went from October to March. And But some people are going to tell you that's South Korea, and the United States is not South Korea. Well, duh. In fact, the horrific danger and the horror of the Trump-Pence regime far exceeds that of the former president of South Korea, with therefore far greater potential to arouse broad and determined struggle. Look, our objective is nothing less than creating a movement from below to force the removal of the Trump-Pence regime. And starting today, we are calling on every person, every organization, every group to be part of beginning a movement of protest that gathers momentum, where people are out every day reaching out and protesting in waves Every day there are new outrages from this regime and new divisions and conflicts among the powers that be. Republican senators are forced out of their party, but then they speak so little truth about the danger of Trump. Indictments, scandals, infighting. Our call to action, which everyone here should sign and get everybody else to sign, it says this, quote, our determination to persist and not back down will compel the whole world to take note. Every force and faction in the power structure would be forced to respond to our demand. The cracks and divisions among the powers that are already evident today will sharpen and widen. And as we draw more and more people forward to stand up, all of this could lead to a situation where this illegitimate regime is removed from power. Without it, it won't happen. How do we get where we need to go? How do we get there? Well, we start with a two-week plan to springboard from where we are today. We're going to start with our march. We're going to show people on this march that there is a force now daring to go against the regime. We're going to be telling them we're ready to go now, chanting and saying and signifying in every way to the people to join us, to join us, to join us, to join us, to, join us to fight for the future. And then there are plans for different protests, speak-outs, rallies, outreach in most days in most cities. And Sansara and Jamel are going to tell you of the plans for New York, but I understand that every day you can find reduced fascism at Washington Square Park from 4 to 6 p.m. But now here, listen to this. The two-week plan is this. There are three nationally coordinated days. This coming Wednesday, which is November 8th, which is the anniversary of the election. Take to the streets. 
This is no time to reminisce about the shock you felt last year. Go out to the high school. Join protests in March. Let's move people from wearing not my president buttons to a situation where he really is not president. And everywhere we go, reach out and bring more and more people into the streets. And second in this plan, next Saturday, one week from today, November 11th, which is Veterans Day, at the end of Donald Trump's Asia trip, come out for major protests against the unconscionable way this madman and his generals have put all of humanity at direct, direct risk of extermination. Take to the streets next Saturday with the lives of our sisters and brothers around the world in our hearts, letting them know that this narcissistic madman is not going to take down the world in our name. And then, the third thing on our national plan, two weeks from today, hit the streets, multiply the size of today's march in more cities with more people, more organizations saying together, this nightmare must end, the Trump Pence regime must start. And all the, over these two weeks, there have to be a lot of different kinds of activities and protests and rallies and ways to organize. And the most important thing that each of you can do is to reach out and involve more people, hand out flyers, speak to groups. And look, we know that this is new for most of you. It's really out of the ordinary from what you've done in your lives. But there is nothing ordinary about Trump and this regime. These are times when ordinary people have to do the extraordinary. So on November 18th, we must have thousands more people get into a situation where every time there's some new outrage from this regime, which is going to be and has been every day, people must say, oh, what about that they must go movement? Maybe I should be a part of that. But look, I want to get down a little deeper in this before I wrap up. There are those who are going to tell us that we should not do this who look at this regime and their determination to vilify and to repress opponents. People who honestly see the bloodlust and the coarseness and the bigotry at the very heart of this, and who say out of this same honest concern that the Trump regime is too vicious and we have no choice but to wait for elections or to fight the attacks as they come up and to hope for the best. But our answer is this, every great struggle everywhere has demanded courage and has demanded sacrifice. We cannot shrink from that. We will not be provoked into foolish or alienating actions, nor will we be cowed by the slander and vilification this regime wallows in and attempts to divide us against each other. There is way too much at stake for any of that. And we remember today the, name, the words of Pastor Martin Nemo, the German clergyman, who ended up in Hitler's concentration camp. Niemöller said, first they came for the communists, but I was not a communist, so I said nothing. And then they came for the trade unionists, but I was not a trade unionist, so I said nothing. Then they came for the Jews, but I wasn't a Jew, so I said nothing. And then they came for me, and there was nobody left to speak up. Many of you, many people here, many people listening to this have heard that quote. But over the next two weeks, we will be called upon many times to remember and apply that lesson anew. But what many of you don't know is Pastor Niemöller also said that had they stood up to Hitler at the very beginning, at a time when the direction and the logic of the Nazis was clear, but the carnage had not yet fully begun, that even though there would have been tremendous sacrifice, it would have been worth it. It would have worked. It might have worked, he said, and think of what could have been avoided if they had tried that. We surely face a situation today no less great. We honor the memory of those who have stood against the Nazis and everyone who has stood for justice throughout history against very heavy odds. We do not seek unnecessary sacrifice. On the contrary, we will do everything we can to prevent anyone in this movement from coming to harm, and we will protect each other. 
But we know that sacrifices are necessary in any great cause and against entrenched power. And we know this, that we are not acting in isolation, but we are acting together with many others who recognize this great danger and are part of this great fight, and that we re represent the interest of humanity as a whole. Friends, we represent the people. The people and the planet are depending on us. This nightmare really must end, and there is a way to do this. Beginning here, and beginning now, and beginning with each of you, and beginning these next two weeks. And then we're going to go on from there. So I'm going to ask you to join me in pledging. In the name of humanity. I refuse, I refuse to accept the fascist America. To accept the fascist America. This nightmare must end. This nightmare must end. The Trump Pence regime must go. 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 Thank you very much and I'll see you in the streets. together. 
and Jamel is going to lead you to do it. All right, so we're going to take this pledge, but like Andy said, this is about bringing people into this. And so we're gonna do we're gonna do a little twist on this pledge. I want everybody to take out their cell phones, take out this device that's been tracking where you have been and what you have done, and now we're gonna use it to bring people into this right here and right now. All right. So we're gonna take this pledge together, but I want you to take it as a selfie, and you're gonna post it. You're gonna post it up on your feed. You and if you don't have social media, you're gonna text it. Like Jay said, you're gonna text it to your mama. Text it to your father. Text it to your sisters, your everybody, your siblings, I don't care who. But text it to your people. All right, so we're gonna do this together. Everybody get their phones out? Raise them up like this so I can see them if you got your phones out. All right, all right? And make sure you're ready for this. Here, let me set up mine, you know, we can do it for the gram right quick. All right, do it for the gram. We'll see what we're doing in 15 seconds. And at this point, y'all should know it by heart because we've done it a bunch, all right? The metaphor for this is on the job training because this ain't no one day thing. This is just the start of it. All right? So everybody ready? Y'all with me? Fist in the air. Fist in the air. And you're going to say your name. All right? Here we go. One, two, three. In the name of humanity. In the name of humanity. I. Say your name. Jamel. Jamel. Refuse to accept, Refuse to accept. A, fascist a fascist America. In the name of humanity. In the name of humanity. I, I Jamel, Jamel. Refuse to accept, Refuse to accept. A, fascist a fascist America. And one more time together with we so we can all feel it together. In the name of humanity. We, we refuse, refuse a, fascist a fascist America. We will not accommodate. We will not, accommodate. We will not conciliate. We will not, conciliate. We, will not stop. we will not stop. We will fill the streets. Demanding 
that this nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. And today we're the thousands, but we're calling out millions. You all are the heart of a movement to drive out a fascist regime in the most powerful country on earth. And your donations are needed for this movement to succeed. Today, November 4th, it's only our beginning. We're going to be in the streets every single day until the Trump and Pence regime is gone. And right now, we're the voice for the majority of this country who hate everything that Trump and Pence represent. We are their voice. But to mobilize all of them is going to take a lot of money. The other side has funding from major corporations, wealthy families like the Trump family themselves, and they have state power. But we have the people. And you can make a donation right now. See our beautiful banners like this giant one, our signs that so many of you are carrying. We need more of these. This sound system, this stage, this costs a lot of money. And I want to tell you right now that on November 18th, two weeks from today, we want to have five times the size of this rally in the street. So what about stickers? Imagine thousands of high school students walking out, thousands of college students storming out in protest, wearing stickers, Trump and Pence must go. Imagine the t-shirts, imagine the hats, the pins, everything people need to identify as part of this vital movement. Who here saw the New York Times full page ad the other day? Yeah, shouldn't we have some more of those? We gotta have those, we gotta have them in the Washington Post, they gotta be everywhere. The world has to know about this. You know, it has to be put on the map. And you are needed to give a donation now because the people who can stop this regime are out there. But we can never win if we don't reach them. I went on the national tour to drive out the Trump and Pence regime. A bunch of volunteers, we traveled down from New York. We went down the East Coast, through DC, through Georgia, through North Carolina, we went to Louisiana, we went all through Texas to the border at El Paso. And this, caused, this took a lot of funds. We had to get a van rental, pay for food and coffee and gas money and materials. We went down there to organize organizers. And we learned that when we bring out the message, every single time, no matter what small city we were in, we would unroll our banner that said, no, drive out the Trump-Pence regime. And people, even in the deep south, people would come running over, so excited, so inspired. But the, the next thing they would always say was, I really wish that was possible. And so we here have a responsibility to show all of these people that there is a way forward, that there is a way to drive out this regime. And so for these, these people in smaller cities, they need our support. So how about staffing? our national office, where people can call in and say, hey, I need help, I need support. Another shout out to the tiny cities like Omaha and Pittsfield, Massachusetts that are rallying right now. It's amazing, give a hand for that. Okay. Okay. So, we know that some of you, you know, some of you came here today, maybe you took off work, maybe you could just barely pay the subway fare. We thank you, we love you for coming out here. If you can give $2, if you can give $5, that would mean a lot. But some of you can spend more than that. Some people here can give $100, $500, $1,000, $5,000. Instead of your $5 coffee a day, instead of your $12 movie ticket, instead of your $50 dinner, donate that money to stop fascism. So, yeah, okay. So, one last important thing before closing. I just want to say that right now, right now as we're standing here, there are millions of people living their lives in fear. There are Muslims being viciously attacked in hate crime after hate crime. Refugees unable to escape war-torn countries. Black mothers and fathers worrying that their children will be killed by the police in the streets. Children afraid that they can go to school on Monday and come home to find their immigrants' parents missing. And so all of these people who are living in this nightmare, 
need to know that they are not the only ones who are afraid. They are not the only ones who are angry. And they are not the only ones who want a different future. We are the movement to drive out the Trump and Pence regime, and you are now part of it, and you have to take this up and bring others into it. It starts by making a donation right now. Find our beautiful volunteers. They are holding buckets. See this bucket, the donation buckets. Find one of them. Dig deep into your pockets and think, what will it take to stop Trump and Pence? You are needed right now. Take out your phone. Go to refusefascism.org slash donate. Refusefascism.org slash donate. Write a check. Think about what this will mean for humanity. And then text three friends, challenge them to match your donation because every dollar is going to make a difference. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. This nightmare must end. The Trump Pence regime must go. We're gonna get ready to march. Are you guys in the marching mood? Yeah. Woo! All right, we got a couple last messages for you and they're important. Everybody knows that students and young people have been on the forefront of every major movement for social change, every movement for justice. If you guys wanna see the youth stand up and fight for a better future for the people of the world, and if then you got to welcome the next speakers. There are some student and youth organizers with Refuse Fascism. And I want, as the buckets go around, as you put money in the buckets, I want you to tune in for the students. We're going to hear from them. And then there's two more people real quick. And then we're going to start marching. So let's bring up the young students. Hi. My name is Anthony, I'm a student at Baruch College, and this is Sabrina, and she is a high school student at LaGuardia. Yeah. Hello, I am a senior in high school. I saw the injustice in this country, and once I saw it, I knew that the only option would be to use all my power to stop it. This is important, it is important to protest because our future depends on it. As High school students in New York City, we need to make sure that our home is not taken over by a fascist government. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, I began organizing with Refuse Fascism almost a year ago, just after Trump was elected. This was the first election that I was old enough to vote in. Uh, as is the case for most current college students. And to say the least, the outcome was really a jarring experience. As students, we're in a critical moment where we have to think carefully and critically not only about our own futures, but about the type of society and the type of world that we want to live in. What type of world do you want to live in? I don't want to live in a world where hate and bigotry are acceptable. I don't want to live in a world where a sex offender can be president. I don't want to live... I don't want to live in a world where science deniers can head major institutions in this government. I don't want to live in a world where the president can joke about hanging LGBTQ people. I don't want to live in a world where a racist opponent of civil rights can head the Justice Department. Yeah. Or entire ethnic and racial groups can be openly, dis openly criminalized and vilified by the president. I don't want to live in the America that Trump and Pence are trying to create. That's why I organize with Refuse Fascism. First, Refuse Fascism is demanding for the removal of the whole administration, and we will not stop at anything less. However, more than that, we're hoping to influence and change the culture, the culture of passivity and complacency. We're hoping to change the culture which accepts and normalize hate and the hate and bigotry embodied in this administration. We are here sending the message 
that fascism and all that characterizes it and all that characterized Trump and Pence and this administration are completely unacceptable. By spreading this message and by joining us today and in the coming months, we hope to influence the American culture and we hope to create an America where people do not ex passively accept the politics of bigotry and hate and where we do not swallow the injustices committed by this country within it and globally. If this sounds hopeful, that's because it is. But this is a hope that I believe is shared by many, especially many young people and many college students. And it's hopeful, but it's also possible. It's, it, might, it may take millions of people coming out in the streets and staying out in the streets, but we will work to reach millions of people. And I believe millions of people are outraged and disgusted by this regime and understand how terrible this regime is and the implications it has for America, for the planet, and for humanity. Today is November 4th, so it has begun. And that means that we will continue after today to mobilize and to organize people in this effort to spread this message and importantly to continue coming out to continue joining actions and marches and rallies with Refuse Fascism and each time bringing more people with you. Students, bring this message to your school. Help change the culture on beginning with your campus. Bring this message to other students and bring other students to realize the impact that they can have in this movement. And remember when you leave today the importance of the demands that we are making for humanity, for, for America, for humanity, and for the planet. Thank you. Yo, what? Okay, can we give a huge shout out to Sabrina and Tony, the students holding it down. Yes, indeed. Now look, folks, we're here to get organized. So, folks who are in the, there are two things I want to point out. Everybody, if you can look around, you can find the folks who are in orange hats, right? Those are going to be marshals. Everybody, folks in the orange hats, raise your hands. Everybody say, what's up? Say, how you doing? Those are going to be marshals, all right? Those will be marshals for our march. You guys can look for them if you need to know where to go. Second thing, folks, you see, there's a theme around brightly colored things here. Ah, ha ha Cheeto in chief. If you take a look at the highlighter colored slips of paper, folks can start passing those out. So the organizers with Refuse Fascism, these are contact cards, y'all. It is important. You're going to get one in just a second. It's going to come around to you. Start filling this out. All right? It's important that folks know and we know how to actually organize with people. That, so we need all this information and actually you need to do it too. All right, next thing up, we're gonna hear quickly from, or actually we're gonna hear from folks here, if you've ever had the instance of stepping out for justice. And we heard a quote from Pastor Nimoy, who was a survivor of Hitler's regime, that first they came for the communists. If you fight for justice, you're going to be standing shoulder to shoulder and you're going to find yourself next to some communists. You're going to find yourself next to some revolutionaries. The next folks that we're bringing up are folks near and dear. Folks that I organize with and as a part of with the New York City Revolution Club. So give it up for Atta and Luan from the New York City Revolution Club. supporters of the Revolutionary Communist Party and members of the Revolution Club to express our solidarity with every person and every group that has come out today. Shoulder to shoulder with you all and thousands across the country, we stand against the crimes of this regime and together we demand this nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go.
In the days and weeks to come, we will be working tirelessly alongside you to grow this movement from the thousands today to the hundreds of thousands to the millions that are ultimately needed to take to the streets night after night and day after day and not stop until this regime is driven from power. And we are also here to urge you to go onto the website www.revcom.us and get into the recent talk by Baba Vakian, the most radical revolutionary in the world today, the architect of a new communism and the leader of our party. Watch the film of the talk, The Trump-Pence Regime Must Go. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. A better world is possible. In this film, Avakian shines a light on the whole history of this country, demystifying the emergence of fascism in America and ultimately delivering, in a real and living way, what must be done to get rid of it. With heart and humor, he gets deeply into the questions involved in undertaking this task. You can find this and more at brevcom.us. And tomorrow at 4 p.m., Revolution Books will be hosting a screening of the full hour-long film. The store is located in Harlem on 132nd Street and Malcolm X Boulevard. And you can talk to bookstore representatives uh, who are among you uh, for more information. Finally, everyone here is taking the first big step in bringing forward this great cause. Let this be a moment where we stand with each other, where we air our differences and treasure our unity, and where we go forward to actually drive out this regime. Because a better world is possible, and it is on us to make this a reality. All right, let's hear it for Luan and Atta with the New York City Revolution Club. We've got just one speaker left, y'all. We got one speaker left, and we are gonna hit the streets we are going to make New York City hear us. We're going to make them feel us. We're going to bounce our chants off the walls. Am I right? Yes. OK, so listen, before we step off, you're going to get an organizing kit. This has flyers. How many of y'all are from Brooklyn? How many of y'all are from Queens? Anybody here from Staten Island? What about the Bronx? And what about here in Manhattan? Yeah. You're gonna take these, oh, Jersey! What about Jersey? Yeah. All right, you're gonna take these, you're gonna spread them, you're gonna get them out to other people, because we're coming back again and again and again. Each time we're coming back stronger. Each time you're bringing more people, especially two weeks from today, November 18th, down in Washington Square Park, we want to have five times this many people. We want to have ten times this many people. This kit is how you get organized to do that. Signing up today, you get organized to do that. So before we step off, I want to welcome our last speaker. His name is Reverend Luis Barrios. He's a brother who has been in the forefront of the fight against these attacks and terror on immigrants. He's in the sanctuary movement here in New York City. He has opened his church to house somebody under threat of deportation. He is putting his church on the line and he is here because he knows, just like you know, that it is impossible to protect everybody who is being terrorized by this regime unless we drive it out. So give some love to Reverend Luis Barrios. Good afternoon. Again, buenas tardes. A few weeks ago I was in Cuba, and we were so excited, full of energy, and someone came up with this question. How can we help? And everybody was in shock when everybody in that room in Cuba told us, go back to your country, fix that shit that you have there, so we can live in peace. So that's why I'm here in the street today, to fix the shit that we have in this country, so we can bring back hope to our people. They lied to us when they told us that the struggle was going to be between people who believe in God 
and people who do not believe in God. That is not true. The struggle was, is, and is going to continue to be between those who practice justice and those who do not practice justice. So welcome to this movement. God bless. All right, y'all. So I want you to repeat after me. Which one are we gonna do to get started? Okay, where's where's Luan? Are you still near the stage? Is Luan still nearby? She's not. Okay, you're gonna leave me to do this by myself. There's a new chant they made up the other day, and it's a good one to march with. It goes like this. It says, "We, we are, we are the thousands." Say that. We, we are, we are the thousands. One more time, we're gonna do it. We, we are, we are the thousands. We, then, we, are, yeah. we are the thousands. Next you say, we, we are, we'll bring the millions. We, we are, we'll bring the millions. Okay, I mixed it up. It's we, we will. This guy up here is keeping me on it, okay? He's from Jersey, he's watching what I say. Okay, the second line is we, we will, we'll bring the millions. We will, we will, we will, we will drive out this rich, how's it going? This is why I asked for, this is why I asked for the one, all right? We, we will drive out the fascists. We, we will drive out the fascists. Trump and Pence must go, oh! Trump and Pence must go, oh! Can you put them all together, bear with me, we're going to do it. We, we are, we are the thousands. We, we will, we'll bring the millions. We, we will drive out the fascists. Trump and Pence must go. Oh! Are you with me? Can you do it? Yeah. All right, because in a second, we're going to do it one more time, then we're going to turn around, and we're going to head out south. So do this with me. Make some noise, and when you get to the oh, I want you guys to throw your arms up and say it like you mean it, okay? You with me? We, we are, we are the thousands. We, we will, we'll bring the millions. We, we will, drive out the fascists. Trump and Pence must go. Use 